on urinary incontinence under the title of the proposal Managing Urinary Incontinence in Village Women in Rural Bangladesh. A cluster, a cluster randomized trial of a community exercise based intervention. With the good grace of Almighty and the thanksgiving to all of the gentry, let us start the program requesting the Honorable Chief Guest to take seats on the dais with other respected guests. Please. Professor Abu Kashim Choudhury, Dr. Hossein Zilu Rahman, Professor Nicola Cherry, Professor Adrian Ward, Dr. Mohsur Kadir Ahmed, and Dr. Ekem Rezalka. Thank you very much, honored guests. Now I would like to request with due respect to Dr. Mohan Kadir Ahmed, coordinator of GK, to raise his welcome address to the audience. Dr. Mohan Kadir Ahmed. Respected chair, honorable chief guest, honorable guests, academicians, researchers, research associates, fellow colleagues, and friends. Assalamu alaikum. It's a great pleasure. Honor for me to welcome you all on behalf of GK to the presentation on the findings of the joint research between the University of Alberta and Manasatva Kendro. The research title was Managing Literary Incontinence in Elderly Village Women in Rural Bangladesh, a cluster randomized trial of a community research and basic research. GK started its journey in 1972 as a registered NGO in post-war Bangladesh. Since then, it was always on the forefront of any major health crisis or catastrophic and humanitarian crisis offered within Bangladesh, alongside government of Bangladesh and other different organizations. During the last four decades, GK has increased its coverage from 50,000 people in 50 villages in 1972 to almost 1.2 million rural population in 608 villages in 70 different districts across the country since today. GK now has 43 primary health care centers with five referral hospitals and two tertiary care hospitals supported by one medical college, dental college, paramedical training institute, department of pharmacy, microbiology, physiotherapy and biomedical engineering. We as an organization always work in the forefront of giving health services and making it available to the lesser privileged majority. GK was one of the subjects for the Alamata Declaration in 1978. We are also, GK also pioneers in many initiatives. We stepped the way for women empowerment, community-based health care, paramedical trainings and accessibility of health care, mostly in rural the role of GK in national drug policy in 1980 is well known to all. In recognition of that, GK received the highest organizational award presented by the government of Bangladesh, Shadinata Patak, among many others. Community-based medical education initiatives of Bangladesh Samadhi Medical College, well recognized by the World Bank Bullet, it is well known. To address universal health coverage, GK started a specialist health camp in remote and hard to reach areas of Bangladesh, now become a model. At present, the biggest dialysis facility in Bangladesh operating by GK under affordable health care trust. WHO recognized urinary incontinence as a disease in 1998 and he started promoting international consultation on urinary incontinence to create awareness and gave treatment guidelines. With the association of University of Alberta and GK Research Wing, the Royal Research on Urinary Incontinence officially started in October 2014 and full trial was started in August 2015. The primary objective of this research was to decide whether an special intervention that compromised with pelvic floor muscle training and mobility exercise along with bladder exercise would be more effective than any 
other in the middle of the Among the elderly fitness women with low income. With cluster randomized trial method, research primary to randomize the data from villagers, which what has the primary data for the research. In this occasion, Honorable Professor Nicola Cheri, head of Department of Genetic Medicine, and Professor Adrian of Genetic Medicine Department of University of Alberta, along with Dr. Rachel Box, Senior Director of the Department of Hospital, will present the findings of the research in front of you. I am hoping the findings of this delicate research will help to guide other fellow researchers all around the world. I once again welcome you all in this dissemination seminar of this fellow research on behalf of EK and University of Alberta. Thank you. Is humbly requested to deliver high valuable presentation. Professor Nicola Chetty. Thank you. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, after many years working with GK, uh, to meet so many colleagues from Bangladesh and elsewhere to talk to them about the work we've been doing on this whole issue of managing urinary incontinence. I'm pleased to say we've got some women who took part in the study with us over here. Um, and uh, we will look forward to talking to them afterwards about this. It's just going to take a moment to work out. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to talk about in this presentation. I put the difficult because of the, uh, the um, Project to present, so I'm going to have to present to you the scientific background and some of the methods we've used. Um, so I'm going to take about half an hour to do that to show you what we've done and what we've found. And then my colleagues on the, uh, on the platform are going to talk about the implications for it, uh, for moving forward to using it, this sort of approach more generally. So during the talk, I'm going to very quickly tell you what is known about how you can manage your area incontinence. Uh, using exercise rather than using drugs or surgery. Um, we put out form in the question we asked for in the study, and then at the end I'll tell you whether we've answered it or not. Um, a bit of a background about the study, why we did the GK, uh, why we chose to look at incontinence rather than other issues, and why we did we did this in LV Berlin. Lots of pre preliminary work. Um, we first started talking about this project in about 2011, so eight years ago. We had to do a lot of work, talking out the best way to do it um, before we really formally start, started the trial. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. Then we'll be a 30 second seminar on what a customer lies time is. Um, before we go on to talking about what sort of exercise, what sort of interventions. And finally, what are the results? And then the really important issue from my point of view is what do we do next? Having done this trial, having shown you the results, how do we move forward to help as many women as we can um, using this approach? So, this is a very good slide on this. Really what is known? We do know from lots of work that's been done throughout the world, almost entirely uh, in westernized countries. Uh, using one-on-one -on -one therapy between the patient and the, um, the therapist, that uh, exercise uh, is involved in strengthening of the muscles of the pelvic floor. That's the sort of muscles that can get damaged in childbirth, the sort of muscles that keep your bladder functioning and stable. If we can strengthen those muscles within, with incontinence, they will get better. That's known. Um, what isn't known is uh, whether it can be used in countries such as Bangladesh. It's the first recommended treatment, so we're not going out on the limb and suggesting something that isn't medically accepted and recognised. Um, for most common forms of uh, urinary incontinence, it is the, the way forward. I should say, I'm sure everybody in the room knows what urinary incontinence is. What we're talking about here is when a person here, an elderly woman, 
let's have those involved really with her and, and um, is from that point uh, feels that she may be unclean, that she's distasteful for other people, she can't go to prayer. So it's a very important problem in societies such as uh, Rome are working in him. So the basic question of the study was good exercise, including pelvic floor muscle training, PFMT, be a feasible and effective intervention for elderly village women in Bangladesh. So that's the basic question we set out to ask uh, and to answer. Uh, two important differences from everything that's been published so far, pretty well everything, is that it's based on uh, exercise carried out in groups, whereas almost all the other studies have been based on people one in one, therapists and patients. Um, so, and the second important difference was we didn't just concentrate on those muscles in the pelvic floor, we concentrated also on increasing the mobility in these older women on the belief based on research evidence, but that would also help them manage their own confidence. So, it's a mixed program. Well, why is he came? My chair just seems to see what uh, we're coming. Uh, really, it was obviously because of the way that uh, TK had been set up, which allowed us to do this, um, and it was to do also with the uh, interaction between uh, Dr. Chowdhury and my colleague uh, Corbett McDonald, who worked with GK for some 20 years, uh, who died a couple of years ago. Um, but by that time, he got me involved, and I was very pleased with that. Respect for him and for Dr. Jasuri to try and carry on some of the work that he was doing. He wasn't actually involved in the program of Dr. Care, but he was, this is a bit of him, in fact, giving the course on uh, epidemiology of public health doctors, which, you know, I think, 2000, which was my first introduction to him. There's one other person I want to mention before we move into her thought. Um, it's a Jose Charlie, uh, who was very instrumental in uh, completing or getting completed the study of the elderly, which is the basis of this, of this study that we're talking about today. So, we carried out with Moisture's help um, a study of some 43,000 elderly residents living in villages in the UK. Looking to see what their needs were, looking to see what their disabilities were. And looking, most importantly, something where we could have some sort of impact, where within the existing facilities of GK, where how could we help the elderly people in the villages? And one of the really striking factors was how many of them complained of urinary incontinence, both men and women, actually. Um, but in the women over 60, it was one in three who suffered from urinary incontinence, and those with incontinence were also complained of depression. Um, so this, this was published, uh, and I think actually it's available on the GK website, if you want to find it. So, we had the idea, uh, we had meetings, we talked to the, some of the engineers and women, we talked to a physiotherapist in GK, um, and we said, yes, this is possible, let's go ahead. But before we could actually start the study and be raising money to do it, we had to carry out a lot of preliminary work. The first thing was to find a program of research uh, exercise that was acceptable to these elderly women in the villages. Um, we were able to base it on work that was being done in Alberta with elderly women there, but that's a very different, perhaps, a very different issue. So the first thing we did in two villages, uh, working with a colleague who's not here today, um, and with um, the physiotherapist with GK, was to work out what, what sort of program could we reasonably expect them to follow. We then uh, wrote the proposal, the protocol for the main study, and tried it out in five villages. And it's only really after all, all of that has been completed that we could even start to find the funds to put this study in place. Uh, I want to mention here particularly Professor uh, Anina Hare, who helped us very much with the positive aspects of that evaluation. 
working out what would be accepted for women and what wasn't and why not. So that, that, that was the very important part of doing that living work. After the title of this is the first randomised trial. Randomisation is the key in many studies of trying to show whether a new innovation works. Particularly, for example, in drugs. If you've got a new drug, you'll have the active drug, and you'll have a sugar pill, and you'll randomise people to the sugar pill or the active drug, and then you'll be able to see at the end whether the active drug really did have any effect. So that's a randomised trial where you randomise people. On this occasion, we didn't randomise people, we randomised villages. And we did that for a number of reasons, not least that we thought that group exercises, which obviously are um, a good use of a limited resource, we've only got so many physiotherapists to go around, uh, so let's use groups. But we also felt very strongly that if we did actually use groups, we would help to treat the depression in women as well as the um, incontinence. So we partly chose this design uh, to increase the likelihood that women who are very depressed to start with would find social interactions as well as feeling better. So we took 16 pairs of villages uh, in UK. Uh, the pairs were in the same as they had been women who were large enough to have a, an exercise group, and we chose them to be roughly a sensitive and conversation. And then we randomised them. We randomly said one of those is going to get the exercise intervention, and another is going to get the education. Um, so that was the design, and that's what allowed us to get a clear answer to the question. I'm not going to spend too much of my limited time talking about what the exercise intervention is. We will talk about that a bit later during the day. But basically, it was for 12 weeks, the physiotherapists led a class, twice a week, a one hour class, which covered both uh, the mobility exercise and the pelvic floor exercises. And on every day they offered the class, the woman exercised at home following the same protocol. Which will be explained by the physiotherapist. After 12 weeks, the physiotherapist moved on to another village, but the research paramedic stayed behind, and in fact, in each village, the research paramedic carried on uh, with those exercise classes. So, 24 weeks, the women were twice a week um, in the classes and carrying out exercise at home. And this is the sort of um, information they took home with them to remind them what sort of exercises they were going to do. And the, all the exercises are very clearly laid out. Uh, and as of last night, I understand on the GK website, so they are uh, accessible to everybody. We've got to talk about that a bit later. For women not assigned to be in the exercise, or villages not assigned to be in the exercise classes, Oh, sorry, I forgot my thoughts for me. This is just meant to show that I do mention the physiotherapist by name. Uh, Dan McDonald came from our nurses who work with um, Hannah, which is here at the front here, and in the early stage uh, with Nazma um, to develop the exercises. And I'd like to mention every girl by name, and I can't, but I will just mention So on the education side, this was actually done by the, the research paramedics. Um, they uh, each did either, either the main exercise or the education. Every month there was some element of exercise education on how to maintain a healthy diet, and that went on for the whole 24 weeks of the study. And that's again, which is the full details of that on the website um, for those who uh, might be used in implementing this themselves. So how are we going to measure during the meetings? It's worth thinking for a second, how are you doing this? In, in many societies, women are asked to keep an eye, so that every night when they go to bed, they, they write down how, how many times, how much leakage they have during that day. 
The women in the study wasn't really realistic. Almost all of them were illiterate. They were not um, able to read and write. Um, so we did, in fact, devise uh, a new way to do this. We call it the three-day content level, the 3DCR, and we it a couple of times. Um, and this, in fact, was suggested at the very end of the meeting we had, I think it was Christmas in the year 2011, 2012, when we first talked to the women about this, we had a meeting, and in fact, we were through the channel, we said, use ribbons. They won't understand that. Um, and that's what we did. So the women, in fact, wore a belt around the waist for three days a month, and every time they had uh, a leakage, they tied a lot in red ribbon, and every time they had a normal jersey, they put a knot in the yellow ribbon. And then at the end of the three days, the paramedics collected up these ribbons, sent them back to GK, and they counted the number of ribbons. So the outcome measure we're using here is quite literally that the number of red knots that were tied in with the belt. of staff were involved in this trial. The village paramedic, the research paramedic, the community physiotherapist, and the field monitors. That was for the trial. If we were to put this in place afterwards, after the trial, we'd probably just look at the first of those, the village paramedic, with support from the physiotherapist, but don't be too appalled by the amount of staff we use for this. That is, would go forward. That would not be. That would not be essential. The training would be. We in fact trained uh, all those four groups of staff um, at Savar uh, immediately prior to the, the main trial and after 12 months. And I think these are um, research paramedics trying out the education training with the with the family. And indeed, it was the village paramedics who identified all the women in the village uh, and went to visit them in their homes because we had to be concerned about stigma, people not being willing to talk about incontinence and group meetings. So they visited their homes and they did interview every woman between the age of 30 and 60 and 75 uh, using three standard questions and identified who met the inclusion criteria and there were very few exclusion criteria if they weren't no violence in the exercises, if they were mentally confused, or if they had usually products, they weren't included, but everybody else was. It was a very inclusive time. We collected data of the research paramedics, collected data for 24 weeks, several occasions, the beginning, the end, and in the middle. Mainly using the drones, they were the main measure we used, but we also, at the baseline, we got information about how many babies they've had and so on, uh, and about uh, the quality of life and the um, depression scale. Got those again at the end to see if they've changed, and we've got a depression scale also at three months. So, seven measurement points um, which we've got the, the, the red knots to be counted. And that was, like I say, our primary outcome how many red knots. But I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about changes in depression because. Myself, that's a very important uh, outcome and what I call it. If women had, a lot of women had dropped out, that would have been an important issue for the analysis. Uh, we said from the beginning we would, we would analyse it by intention to treat, and we did. Uh, but it wasn't a big issue because, in fact, only 22 of all the women in the study uh, didn't complete. So it was very successful trial in that sense, and the statistical issues about dropouts really weren't it, weren't it at all. So the first bit of the result was how successful were they in matching, and the answer was extremely successful. So the women in the uh, exercise villages uh, and women in the uh, education only villages were very, very similar. We couldn't find any differences. We had well, just under 300 women in the exercise classes and 280 women in the uh, 
with occasion only, and they were exactly the same on age, on how uh, what their BMI was, how, how fat they were, how many children they'd had in pregnancies. Um, they were very similar socioeconomic age, similar numbers of the widows, and so on. So we were, that was very successful to find no difference between them. Time differences do test the bond of life. And this is the only figure I'm going to slide I'm going to give you numbers. I'll just work through certainly the top row and tell you what it means. So at baseline, that's when we recruited them before we started any intervention, any treatment. Uh, on average, the women in the exercise class were having episodes of urinary leakage. Um, getting their clothes down to the urine at least four times a day, on average, and in the education group, about the same. By the end of the 24 weeks, the women in the intervention group, the exercise group, was really only about once every other day they were having a on average. So it's a huge improvement. And though the people in the education group also, so some improvement, they were still having episodes nearly three times a day. So, it was really much more successful in the exercise group. Uh, and that was also true, and I'll show you pictures of this is then, on depression and quality of life. So this is what happened uh, month by month in the exercise group. If you look at the red line there, that's the women who are doing the exercise. You can see there, episodes of leakage break down and down and down every month. So we stopped doing that trial. And in fact, uh, Dr. Wagner took to tell us at the moment what happens to our once age. But at the point we stopped there, the women in the exercise group are still the piece of paper, almost as yet. So there are very few women, or only a, a large proportion of women that were not leaking at all for about uh, 24 weeks. Whereas in the, ex the education group, the blue line, they were pretty well stayed steady. They came down a bit, there was nothing dramatic going on. So if you're looking at that table, that picture there, that is the result of the study. Everything else I've been saying doesn't matter. That is the result of the study. And in practice, 41% in the uh, exercise group were consistent for our identical study. But nobody, no woman in the education group was completely blind. And that's again a fairly dramatic difference. So it was successful uh, in 40 points in two out of five women who was completely dry at the end of the cell. Clearly, no one was dry at the beginning. Depression, I'm just going to show you a picture of the words on depression. So this is what happened with depression. That in both groups, depression increased which is good. Um, so simply, in the education group, simply the power medic going to talk to them every month, uh, telling them about um, measuring their, putting on the belt, taking off the belt, talking about the healthy belt, that's the thing itself decreased their depression. But the women in the exercise group decreased more, and as you can see, they decreased particularly during the three months the physios were running the trial, uh, running the class. So we were successful uh, in decreasing depression. And I have a picture here, also increasing quality of life. And this was <coughs> a scale with Charleston that day, what their health felt like, and the women uh, very much improved, and again, both groups, but more so in the uh, exercise group. If they felt it would be at the end of 24 months, their health was much better. And indeed, those in the uh, exercise group were containing less of um, discomfort and pain in their daily lives. So the general mobility exercise would help deal with the um, these sorts of uh, mobility issues that all the people get. So this is near the end of my presentation. We did ask, it's an important question, the women in the exercise group who attended more classes do better than the women who, whose attendance was less good. The, about the attendance of classes was nearly 80%, so it was, it was high. Um, and the answer is the more closed, the more classes they went to, the more likely they were to have 
to get married and have very low legal, so that's very comforting. But uh, to know that, or at least the people who were running the groups, that those who came and did the exercises did very well. And indeed, not only did they uh, uh, lead to the group, but they did the question the group as well. So, uh, a good argument for saying, look, don't just join the next time group, attend to the exercises and you will be better. So that's, again, a good evidence. So going back to the question we asked, uh, was whether these forms of exercise could be feasible and effective to carry them out in uh, healthy women living in Manchester villages. The answer, I think, is uncompromising yes. Uh, There's good, good evidence that the exercise intervention was more successful in education, uh, that the, in, the exercise intervention resulted in better perception of their health and less depression, uh, and there were no adverse effects on their high rate of completion. So the conclusion of this talk is yes. We have shown it's 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 distinctly possible and uh, effective. But the question I think we all of us are to is what next. We've shown it can be done. How do we in fact disseminate this more widely? How can we implement it in, in new groups and what would they be the costs? I think we'll see what the benefits are, but what would the costs be? So we've got two more talks from my colleagues. Um, Dr. Avery Wang <coughs> is going to talk about the improvements we saw in the exercise villages are they maintained and what we have to do to make sure that they are maintained. And then uh, there's your work. We're going to talk about uh, how can we, where can we go next? Can we, in fact, pull the physiotherapists back to be supervising paramedics but get the paramedics themselves running the exercise groups? And if so, is that going to be as effective as we had in the trial? So if I may, I would ask you. Uh, thank you for allowing us to come and talk about the study. As you've heard, the exercise intervention was effective at reducing incontinence and rendered two out of five women dry. Clearly, it's good, a good result, but we wanted to know whether it could be sustained and so conducted a follow-up study one year after the end of the initial study. So we wanted to know was there still any benefit to the women and were there any efforts to continue the exercise. As Dr Cherry has said, we showed that for women to gain benefit they needed to attend and perform the exercises we wanted to know whether that was still occurring. So we uh, did a few things. We uh, did an interview with the village paramedics who wants to know whether there were formal organised group exercises um, after the original six month uh, intervention. We wanted to know who organised them and the kind of things that either helped the exercises to work uh, and uh, would, would, would they in, uh, imagine any problems in having a paramedic led exercise programme in the future. We also interviewed ladies who took part in the programme. We wanted to know what kind of exercises they did. Were they group organised exercises or were they exercises at home? Whether they felt that the exercise intervention itself was acceptable to them and what might be made better for them. So, we uh, looked at six exercise villages so far of the uh, numbers we, uh, we uh, had. We, uh, we identified 96 women who were in the main study uh, and 18 were recruited for this follow-up study one year later. Of the 16 that we couldn't find, five had died, five had moved elsewhere, three couldn't be found at home, and three were unable to answer the question. So we had 80 out of 96 women in these villages who had originally taken part in the study. So of these women, 35 
had continued with organised classes, but only eight were still attending these. Very uh, fortunately, the 71 women were still doing exercises at home. And as you can see from the graph on the right hand of the slide, the majority of those women were doing exercises at least twice weekly, the frequency of which the organised classes had been. And really, uh, rather nicely, 74 women could show us their home exercise sheet when uh, they were seen at home. So they could remember and, and show what needed to be done. So, what about the results one year later? As you can see, at the end of the main study, of the, these women, um, 45 were uh, dry, 56%, um, and at follow-up, 51 of those women were completely dry. And then, as you can see, very few women had severe leakage of more than once a day. The good evidence that uh, for these women, the trial results were sustained over that year. This just shows the uh, severity of their incontinence. Uh, and you can see that the majority of people had mild incontinence. So, what did we see in our 80 women? Well, 35% um, of the women were dry at the end of the initial study and were still dry as follow-up. There was some movement uh, between being wet at the end of the study and dry as follow-up, so one-third of the women, and dry at the end of the study and being incontinent as follow-up, which affected one in five women. 15 women remained wet both at the end of the initial study but also at follow-up. But overall, 63% of all women were, were dry uh, one year after the end of the study. <coughs> so in the three of the six villages, the village paramedic continued group classes. Uh, and in two of the villages, the, these classes continued up to the end of the, of the uh, one year after the main study. As Dr. Cherry has said, a similar finding that women who continued to do classes or exercise at home at 12 months continued to derive benefit. If women were doing no exercises at follow-up, 33% would dry. But if they were continuing exercises, 73% of those women would dry. This is the same for those who are both wet and dry at the end of the main study. So as much as exercises work for physical fitness, you need to carry on with them to maintain the benefit. This is true for this type of intervention for urine incontinence. Dr. Cherry mentioned depression. So I think it's, uh, uh, I think, uh, really important for women with incontinence. Uh, incontinence, as has been said, has a major impact on daily life, something which is often neglected. What we can see here uh, was that depression scores were improved, but the majority of the improvement, as shown in Dr. Cherry's first slide, is achieved in the first three months. <coughs> Intriguingly, women who remained wet remained depressed. This is really a summary of this slide. You can see that those who remained wet the end of the initial study and continued to be wet really had no improvement in their depression. So what about the interview questions? We asked how the program could be made better. And the village women were uh, very enthusiastic about the program and wanted to be able to tell other women about the benefits of the intervention. Uh, and uh, a quote from one of the women suggests that we will go together to the other villages women and describe the benefits of this exercise classes and tell them the way we were cured and then they will agree to take part. So using uh, women as local champions for the exercise may be a way ahead. Village women also, suggest, also suggested ways in uh, getting other people to join. Um, Again, I'm getting a good idea of all the women who are affected in a village, which helps be important to include 
everybody as much as possible. Village women were convinced about the benefits of exercise, and they felt that this again was very applicable to all women with the same problems. What did our paramedics say? Um, paramedics were again universally enthusiastic about the training that Jean Kay had given and the, the job that Jean Kay had done for village women. Uh, and they felt that the village women felt happy because they derived benefit from the exercise and had a reduction in their incontinence. The paramedics were also uh, quite uh, enthusiastic and very favourable towards the uh, programme and how it was delivered. And uh, one of the paramedics suggested that the neighbour and relative of the woman who was doing the exercises said that this is very effective. And it was better, uh, again, if we could spread out the exercises to other villages. They also intriguingly mentioned the availability of snacks. There was some discussion about some of the measurement things that we used during the research uh, in, in practice. And some of the paramedics felt that the, the belt and some of the questionnaires were important to give a focus and emphasis on the importance of the exercises and how they should be done. So we're waiting for more information from three more villages. But from anywhere in the world, there is almost no evidence of the long-term effect of these kind of exercises for women with incontinence. So this is really of great interest and we think of great importance. Um, we, we, I think we hopefully have convinced you that so far the initial results are extremely convincing and that one year later the results are sustainable with uh, delivery in the same way but by a different uh, level of, of staff and input. And um, we hope that you found this useful. Thank you. Thank you for your valuable presentation, uh, Professor Adrian Wall, Division of Geriatric Medicine, Department of Medicine, University of Alberta, Edmonton, Canada. Now, Dr. Etienne Rezal Hawk, Senior Director, Bon Shastu Kendra, and uh, Faculty Member of Bon Vishu the respected person is, is requested to hold his, hold his valuable presentation on the issue to fulfill the endless study of performance. Dr. A.K.M. Rezalba. So thank you everybody. In this men's study, three from Canada and we are three from Bangladesh. And from Bangladesh, Dr. Jabula Chaudhary is one of us and Professor Moshe Chodhi, late professor. And out of the three from Canada, two are here. Professor Nikola Chodhi and Professor Adrian Uwai. There are another one who contributed a lot to train our paramedics and also the physiotherapist for the main study. She is absent here today due to her heart problem. We hope that she will again come to Bangladesh to support this kind of program in future in other areas beyond Manchester Kingdom. Thanks. Actually, I am going to present the rollout phase of this men's study and the follow-up study. And using the exercise group therapy beyond the trial. And where we are now, we have already shown in the group exercise the effectiveness in managing urinary incontinence in the elderly women of rural Bangladesh. And also we have seen the improvement in incontinence, including in the depression can be maintained over many months. So, 
how we can use this to improve the lives of incontinent women in other GK program region because you heard from the coordinator of GK that 609 villages we did it in 16 years in the main story in 12 villages uh, 32 villages out of that only exercise villages were 16 in the follow-up we have 9 and in the rollout we have included 16 villages from the education arms and four new villages. Yeah. If this program can be extended to new areas. And also in other villages outside GK in Bangladesh, even beyond Bangladesh. The trial we used during the trial, the community figure therapies. No. We are short of physiotherapists in our country, even in GKOs. And we can roll out this program through the trained physiotherapists, train the paramedics. If the paramedic will be trained in future, they can run this kind of trial or this kind of exercise to improve the human incontinence of the elderly woman in Bangladesh or beyond Bangladesh? Is, is it possible? This is the main questions of the rollout. And in the main study, we already say that the research therapeutic, they are continuing the exercises after the completion of the exercise in the first 12 weeks by the physiotherapist directly. And from 13 to 24 weeks, it is continued, the group exercises, by the research therapy. And this roll-out phase, we use the paramedic, the village paramedic, to do this kind of exercises instead of physiotherapists. And what we have done in this phase, we choose 20 village for the rollout. And out of this, 16 village from the exercise, because in the education villages, in the main trial, we are not giving the exercise classes. We have given only the education about the healthy bladder and how and also about the drinking of water and the use of the, uh, eating vegetables. And also we have included four new villages and we have trained the paramedics of these 20 villages to do the exercise in the village in groups for six months. In the main story, the village family did only to identify the homes aged between over 60 to 75 years. And also they find out the homes of incontinence at that age groups. But here yeah, they did it and also the physiotherapy exercises. Now, we have not completed the rollout phase. It will be completed within May 2019. So, we have so far reports with her. We will await the rollout one. We have the informal because we follow the same protocol like the main study. That is, we fill up the questionnaires, severity index of incontinence, that is the sandy questionnaires, before starting the first exercise class. And the second sandy questionnaires will be filled up after the completion of the 
24 weeks exercise classes to find out if any dryout or any kind of improvement of the urinary incontinence. And also, we have keep all the records of the attendance in the exercise class. At the same time, we keep the records, the feedback from the physiotherapist who supervise this in the rollout phase and also the paramedics and the villagers. And we plan the timeline to carry out this rollout. We think we have a training class in these 20 villages. All the paramedics we have chosen are the new paramedics. They have not the past experience of the mainstream because we want to see if this kind of activity in future will be run by the paramedics is possible or not. So, we train 22 paramedics for the 20 villages and the training was provided by the physiotherapist and also we are supported by the research paramedic. And we started the training for the rollout of the 20 villages from 3rd to 6th September 2018. And after the training, we did the screening of the 20 villages. And the 6th month class was started. Then uh, we have in the meet there is a literature training for the uh, village paramedics. And according to that plan, it will be ended by this March. But we are able to start, in practice, we are able to start the first village of the rollout is 29 September 2018. And the last one is 11 November 2018. So we have required to yeah, six months time, that the 24 weeks for the exercise to complete. That's why we have no complete data at present with us. Because we have to go for the sample questionnaires again after the completion of the 24 weeks exercise. And we follow during the training camps. We follow the same protocol we follow in the main trial. In the main trial, the exercise class in two, in two days in a week for one hour. Here we follow the same thing. And also, we have the data, the quality of the data. We try to ensure the quality of the data, so we have the field monitor. Here also the field monitor goes to the villages and collects the data. And the results so far of these 20 villages, we have 2,165 women skin out of that age group above 60 to 75 years, of whom 699 uh, have were the incontinence, that is 33% of the 2,165 women. In the men's study, it was 32%. And of that, 316 recruited from the 20 villages. Uh, the range of the group for the exercise is 13 to 21. But in the men's study, it was 13 to 27 in a, in a one group. <coughs> and all the women had to fill up the two items of questionnaires in the semi questionnaire. Yeah? One about the frequency 
and another one about the quantity of the urine. And here you can see so far the results of these 20 villages. The severity of the frequency is more than 51%. And also the amount is yeah, the quantity, the quantity of urine is more than 62%. This is more severe. And if you go to the sandwich severity index categories, we can see the severity was more than 62%. The severe. And about the class attendance, in the exercise group, I started almost around 90% of the open food quantity exercise. And we, in the four months, we found that around 74% of the OMS are attending the exercise classes. And it is almost around the similar of the main exercise classes attendance. And according to the Professor Adrian work, that if the OMS those who have incontinence and continue the exercise classes, the result, yeah, achieved is good. And we hope that if the women will attend the exercise class and continue the exercise, they have the better chance of better results than others. And here, in these slides, we can see the average classes in a month in a month, we have eight classes. Yeah? And we have, we have the comparison between the first three months exercise classes between the rural and the main study. It is almost, almost similar. Almost similar of the attendance in the class. And lessons so far we have learned from the rural study. That this sort of activities we can go for in our country by the paramedics. It is possible. By the paramedics, they can easily lead such kind of activities to help the elderly women of my country, even beyond our country. And yes, they required, they required the support, that is they required the training about the physiotherapy. Because the paramedics of Guanajuato Jungle, they have some basic idea about the physiotherapy trainings. But if we are able to provide the proper physiotherapy training under the direct guidance and supervision of the physiotherapists who have the practical experience of urinary incontinence will be the future manpower of our country to mitigate and minimize the big problem of the elderly women of our country. And we hope that our this free study, the main study, the follow up and the roll up will give the guidance to our policy level peoples and to the academic peoples and the organizations who are working with the elderly populations of my country. Thank you. Thank you.